Welcome back everybody to Desktop Inventions. Now in today's video, we're gonna be talking about bed spring upgrades in a little more detail. So in the last video, we talked about upgrading our bed springs from the flimsy weak stock springs to some more stiff and rigid springs. And in the comment section down below, I had some people asking, what about using silicone spacers instead of bed springs? So I purchased some of those silicone spacers online and we're gonna test them out today. Before we talk about the upgrades today, let's ask ourselves a couple things. Number one, what's the purpose of bed springs anyways? And number two, what problem are we trying to solve? So first looking at the purpose of the bed springs. So the bed springs are there to give you some flexibility to allow you to change the distance from your printing nozzle to your 3D printing surface, your bed. Also the springs make as good spacers to space your bed away from the aluminum mounting plate below it. Since there's a heater on the bottom of the bed, we don't want to waste energy by mounting it to the aluminum plate below it. So now that we've talked about the purpose of the bed springs, let's talk about how these silicone spacers can be a little bit better than these stock flimsy springs. The problem with the stock bed springs is that they're pretty weak and that you'll find out after several prints some of the adjustment screws will change over time, which will mess up your perfect first layer on your prints. And if the screws loosen enough over time, you'll even find that your nozzles can start to drag across your bed, which can ruin your bed, costing you a lot of money and giving you lots of headaches. Now, if you're not using a bed probe such as the BL Touch, this problem can happen extremely quickly, even after just a couple of prints, depending on your printer. But if you install a BL Touch, you can adjust the settings so the probe will check the four corners of your build plate before every print and automatically adjust the printing code to account for any small changes in the four corners. This will help prolong these issues, but it won't solve it entirely. Because after a while, the bed screws will become so loose that your bed actually loses its mounting connection stiffness, and you'll start to see other issues in the vertical walls of your prints. So finally, let's dive into some solutions to help solve our 3D printing headaches. Okay, so we basically have three common options for bed springs. We have the stock bed springs here that we're all familiar with, the upgraded stronger bed springs, and then the silicone spacers instead of a bed spring. And since we know the performance of the stock spring isn't that good, we're gonna go ahead and take that one off the table. And we're gonna focus on these two here. To compare these three options, we'll be looking at the spring constant, which is just the force it takes to compress the spring divided by the distance that we compress it over. So basically we're just measuring how stiff each option is. First up, we tested the stock spring, which is just a modest 35 grams per millimeter. Next, we're going to take a look at the upgraded spring, which is a much higher 120 grams per millimeter. And finally, we'll take a look at the silicone spacer. So when we compress this bad boy, it was about 320 grams, which gives us about 160 grams per millimeter. So this one takes the cake in being the stiffest of our three options. Next up, we'll be looking at the total range of adjustability across these three options. First up is the stock spring. So we'll take a starting measurement here and then we'll compress the spring all the way and take an ending measurement and see what the total range of adjustability is. And we got a final full range there of 11 millimeters, although I'd say that first half of that is pretty much unusable since the spring force is so low. So we'll call it about six millimeters. And next up here with the upgraded stiffer spring. This one has a similar range as the previous spring, but actually the force is much, much higher, so you're getting a lot more useful range of adjustability out of it. At 12 millimeters of full compression depth, this one took over three times as much force to compress as the last spring. And finally here we'll be looking at the silicone spacer. So now we'll notice in this test that this one does not compress nearly as much as the other two options, but actually the force it required to compress it was even greater. That's because the properties of the silicone spacer are different than that of the springs, and actually it doesn't have a linear spring constant like the other springs. So all in all, the total adjustment of the silicone spacer was just six millimeters. And although the number is a little bit smaller, it is still plenty to meet your needs of bed adjustment for 3D printing. If you need more adjustment than this, you probably have bigger problems with your bed or elsewhere. And now for the most important feature of this upgrade, and the most difficult to measure, is the ability to stay over time. Even though this is pretty difficult to measure, it's pretty common knowledge from my own experience as well as others online that these stock springs do not stay put over time. They loosen and they end up messing up your prints. 
As for the stiffer springs, I used those for about a month and did not have any issues with those loosening over time, so I'm very happy with those. And with these silicone spacers, I've had those on for about two weeks with quite a bit of solid printing and have had no issues with those loosening over time. Also from what I've read online in forums, people are happy with both the stiffer springs and the silicone spacers, and maybe a few more people in the silicone spacer camp. As for the cost of these two upgrades, there's not a huge difference. They're both easily available on Amazon for less than $10. So this is one of the most cost effective upgrades you can do, so definitely don't let the cost be a barrier to you making this upgrade. And now for some quick notes on the install. It is super simple. You just have to spin off the wheels of the four corners of your 3D printing bed. And next you can lift up the bed and drop the old springs off of there. Be careful of the wire connection in the back, that is your bed heater. Next we can take these silicone spacers, three tall ones and one short one for the back. And pretty simple, we'll just slip these onto the studs on all four corners of the bed. And for the back corner, we'll use the shorter spacer with the wire bracket underneath it. Next, you can put the four wheel nuts on. You can spin them up until they're snug, and then I chose to do four additional turns after that to get them to a nice snug starting point. Next, just zero your nozzle and do a final bed leveling if you don't have a BL touch, or just a rough bed leveling if you do have a BL touch. Because these spacers are shorter, you might have trouble with the original Z-axis stop switch on the Ender 3. If your nozzle is unable to go down far enough, you might have to take and trim this little nub off here so you can move the Z-axis stop switch down even lower. And after final bed leveling, you'll be back to 3D printing with no worries of screws loosening over time. So people were curious on my thoughts on the silicone bed spacers, and there they are. I think they are as good, if not better, than the stiff bed springs, and I would highly recommend them such a cheap upgrade, I would recommend going for it and never looking back. So until then, we'll see you next time on Desktop Inventions.